Hello friends, welcome back. We are studying basic authentication in ASP.NET Web API. From last few videos, we saw how to implement basic authentication and how to apply it and how to test it in a Postman. But in this video, we are going to see how to consume any Web API which is having basic authentication implemented in ASP.NET MVC. Okay, so the prerequisite for this video is you should be aware of ASP.NET MVC and as well as you should know how to implement authentication in MVC because whatever authentication we have implemented in MVC, the same credential we have to provide to the ASP.NET Web API, okay, which is also expecting the same credential. So I already covered that part means how to implement uh, form authentication in ASP.NET MVC. So if you are not aware of that part, please watch that video first. I will attach the link of that video in the description below. So let us switch to Visual Studio and we will see how to consume a Web API with basic authentication in MVC. Now this is the same MVC application that, that we have used to consume our Web API, which is consume Web API in MVC. So while studying consuming Web API in MVC, we have created this application. So I'm going to use the same MVC application. So let me open a product controller. So this controller is having one index action method. We specified all the things related to consuming the Web API in MVC. So if you are not aware of that part, you can watch that videos also. Now, the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to run this uh, MVC application without providing the credential and we will observe the output first. So, what will I do? I will just switch to this uh, view, index view and here I will run my application. See here. Actually, we didn't get any forbidden response or anything, but at the same time, we couldn't see any details here. You can handle it differently. Means if, if your Web API is returning any forbidden response, in that case, suppose you want to show any dis a different page or different view, you can do that part also. But here, basically, what happened? It is not showing any data. So let us write a code to consume our. Web API having basic authentication. So I'll stop my MVC application. Okay. Now here, uh, already the base address and the method, action method, everything is mentioned. Just what we have to mention here, we have to add the code that will provide the authorization header details to our MVC application. So for that, what I'm going to do, I'm just writing one common method in one class so it is accessible to each and every controller in my mvc application so let me add one class here so let us call it as api security okay say add and then after i'm going to write one static method public static method public void Uh, let me add static word also public static void and then after my method name i'm going to mention the method name as init header because whatever is the authentication related details we usually add in the header of our request so that's why i'm calling this method as init header basically i want to initialize my header so what kind of code will appear here right so here we have to specify which kind of authorization our Web API is expecting. The same kind of authorization scheme you have to provide in the header. Means here we are using the basic authentication. So in the header, I have to mention that that client is also requesting for the basic authentication. And then after you have to specify the username and the password. But that username and password should be colon separated and as well as it should be encrypted in base64 because 
generally basic authentication accept the credentials in base64 format whereas your username and password should be separated with a colon so let us write that code so uh, as i said right initially that you should be aware of the authentication techniques in mvc so here i am not going to include that complexity uh, definitely you can watch that videos and you can implement the same code here so i am assuming that i have one password and username i will provide those details hard coded basically you will get it from your mvc mvc authentication you will go, uh, you will get those details and you can specify those username and password in this init header method so let us write a code that will have the hard coded username and password value so let me declare to string say username so i know that my valid username is admin and then after my valid password is 12345 okay so we specified this now what is the next step we have to specify this username and password in one string which is colon separated okay so let us call this as authentication info auth info okay so here i'll say username then plus then colon and then after again one plus and password basically we concatenated this string or the another approach is you can use a string interpolation also so string auth info is equal to dollar and then after in this two curly braces my variable will appear this colon is a fixed text so username and password this is called a string interpolation okay you can use either way which is easy to understand you so we have specified the authentication info now the next thing is you have to encrypt it okay we have to encrypt it to base 64 so again there is method of convert class that is to base 64 string okay now we want to convert it in web api we want to convert this base 64 to normal byte array that's why we use from 64 string but here we want to encrypt it that's why we are specifying to base 64 string then to this you have to pass this authentication info but if you see the argument it should be in the byte array okay so first of all we have to convert this authentication info to byte array and then after to base 64 right so for that you need one more namespace let me add it using system dot text and the method is encoding dot default dot get bytes and to this get bytes you will specify your username and password which is in auth info okay so we first click converted this credential in bytes and then after to base 64 now let us collect it in variable so let us collect it in auth info again now the next thing is we have to add these details to our header okay to add these credentials in header we need http client also right so what i have to do i have to pass that http client here so i'll say http client this is already a class say http client small http client okay so this is an object and this is a class so let me include the namespace here now to this http client we have to specify this details means basically we have to add the header 
so here i'll say http client dot default request headers dot authorization is equal to new system dot net dot http dot headers dot authentication header value so you have to assign the object of this class means authentication header value what will i do i'll just add this namespace here above so this will be clean and neat code okay so using yeah we are done with this now to the constructor of this class you have to specify which scheme you are using so we are using basic authentication so here i'll say basic and then after i have to pass the credential right so i have to say auth info see the encrypted result we collected in auth info again that's why i mentioned this if you have collected it in the different variable specify the same variable name here okay so we are done with this part now let us add this part while requesting the uri of our web api now here we have already created an object of http client we have specified the base address now then after you can give call to the init header method so it is present in this api security class so I have to specify the class name. It is a static method of that class. So I have to specify init header. And then after to this header, I have to pass the object of HTTP client class. So which object we have? We have this client object. Okay. So whatever code we have written here, means we added that header, right? We specified that authorization header here. So it get applied to this client object. Okay. So I hope you got this code. Let us run this. Just make sure that your web API is in the running state since we are running it on the local host. Yes, our web API is in the running state and we applied the global filter. So each and every action method of this web API needs authentication. Okay. So let us switch to mvc again so i am running this index page now we will observe the output yes now the output is visible if you remember first time without passing credential when we ran this application we didn't see any result but after setting all those things we are able to see the result okay so the only Thing that you have to remember here is that all your credential will come from your MVC authentication or MVC authorization. So here I hard coded it and again I'll repeat I already created the videos for MVC authentication. So you can check out those videos and you can apply that part here and let me know in the comment section how you implemented it. So I hope you enjoy this video. If you have any doubts or any question, please write it to the comment section. Thank you for watching.